Right, it's quarter to twelve. I am on my way to put my stuff in my new stockists. I kind of went through, I've robbed a lot of my own stock, which is yummy, um, to put in. So I've pretty much got what I'm supposed to be giving them. Although I was going to give them some Marvelicious Pendants and I've decided not to. So I'm basically taking 30, although I'm about four short, spinner rings and 40 fidget rings um, to my stockist. I've got a growing sense of panic and anxiety as the day ticks on. But I thought if I go, I get that out of the way, then I need to go back and I can prioritise my makes for the weekend because potentially Sunday could be a big market, potentially. And of course it, it's the time of year, isn't it? It's halfway through November, so. I don't know where October went, because last I heard it was October, but you don't know. A growing sense of, which I should be getting used to by now, everything's about to fall apart. <laughs> So fingers crossed for this new venture. It's very easy for me to see what other people are putting in there and get inside my own head. Um, because I'm not the only person in the world that makes fidget rings and I've seen that one other person is putting fidget rings. They're not the same as mine, uh, but they're also like 28 pounds where mine are 45. Um, yeah. Of course, I follow a lot of jewellers. I don't necessarily follow a lot of other creatives. Depends who I come into contact with at fairs. So I've seen a lot of jewellers getting their stuff ready. So we'll see what happens. It's a kind of free for all. Um, turn up when you want to turn up and get your stock there. I've kind of put some really crappy looking signs together just so that at least I can put something in. And then when I calm down a bit, if ever that is, um, I can get some more professional looking ones. But it's all a learning curve, isn't it? Because this is my second stockist and it's a totally different kettle of fish to my first stockist. My first stockist, everything for a start is in a locked cabinet. Um, and I'm pretty much the only thing there that's not um, vintage. This one is all independent makers and sellers like me but that's all that's in the shop so it's a learning curve everything doesn't have to be perfect right now Rebecca the world won't fall apart comparison is the thief of joy I don't know who said that but they are very very white there will always be somebody whose jewellery is better than mine. There will all be, always be somebody whose jewellery is worse than mine. And jewellery is very subjective. What one person likes doesn't mean another person will like it. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the jewellery. It just means everybody likes different stuff. I'm telling myself, not just you. <laughs> well, not even you. I'm telling myself. I'm just having a talking to of myself. So then when I get home, I can see where the massive gaps are in my stock and see how much I can get done this afternoon. But I'm not holding out loads of hope because I'm already feeling quite overwhelmed. But we'll see. We will see. One thing I do need to get better at, and I'm going to try this weekend is, when people try rings on and they're not, they want a slightly different design, I send them away to order on my website, which never happens. What I do need to do is say to people, yeah, no problem, do you want to order that with me right now? And then take the money and place an order myself right there and then. 
because if you let people go away they forget or talk themselves out of it whereas if I can encourage people there and then to go well is that the size you want and is that the size you want no problem let me order that for you now and you'll have it by the end of next week I won't say that because I know myself I know myself but that is my target for the weekend is to see if I can encourage people to place hoarders so far today I've not had much rage so that is a massive improvement on yesterday because there was so much rage yesterday. It will be the small that breaks the camel's rod. Anyway, I shall catch you later. Be careful because it goes, does get dark early nowadays, you know. I don't know if you knew. It does get dark early. So I'll catch you later on Funks. All done. So that's my stock in. I am five spinner rings missing. I didn't leave my spare stock because at the minute it doesn't look, it's not quite set up how it's going to be. Um, Nat, the owner, just wants to get the shop open and, you know, get trading for everybody which is fair enough. So basically I've just left some stock and I'll worry about the rest next week. And she seemed happy with that. Um, I had a quick look round at the people that have already dropped their stuff off. It doesn't look like 50 sellers are gonna fit in there at the moment, but then there's some shelves to go up apparently. Well, we will just see how it goes. It's in a very, very good location. Um, so that is what oh, What time is it? Half past 12. I've got to go and cut my dad's hair. The carpet wants faxing. My brother's bathroom needs cleaning. And I need to calm the chuff down. Massage Vegas nerve. Massage. Well, I think it's called Vagus, not Vegas. M massage Vagus nerve. Let's see how little stock I've got left for the weekend now. It's a never ending trauma of stress. <laughs> Oh, I might stop off at Hopkinson's and just pop a sign in. Uh, hey, Bo. Um, I was just thinking, if you was thinking on on the weekend of hitting Dad up for lost earnings, I usually make like five grand on a Sunday. So if you was hitting him up to give me some of my lost earnings, just so I'd let you know, usually make about five far. Thanks. Random thought. I was once on holiday as a young child at the British seaside, which inevitably meant a day of torrential rain when we didn't have any waterproofs with us. So we went along looking for waterproofs. And of course, the thing that everybody wore as waterproofs um, were cagoules, which were basically waterproof jackets. Um, these were a new thing to my family um, as we weren't the outdoorsy type and we found one of these store uh, one of these shops typical in the British seaside that sell all kind of tat outside like beach balls and spades and and they had these waterproof jackets however the person who'd put the waterproof jackets out didn't know how to spell cagoule they had spelt it C-A-G-U-L so for the first 15, 20 years of my life, I called them Kaggles because I thought they were called Kaggles. They're not, they're called Kaggles. And I don't even know why that's just come to me, but it has. They're not called Kaggles. 
they're called kagoos. So that person's misspelling of that sign impacted my entire life for 20 years. 20 years, I tell you. And that is all I have to say to you. That is one of the funks what I've had today whilst in the van. Van funk for Friday. Funks for my funks. Cago. Thank you.